A country just like an Olympic athlete cannot be good in everything, but must focus on areas where we can excel and successfully compete in the global market. We ran labs involving participation from the private and public sectors. And this we held to identify sectors in Malaysia that have the highest impact on delivering gross national income, attracting investments, and creating new jobs. We consulted extensively with the private sector and concluded that the focus should be on 11 economic sectors and one geographical area. How have we done? In just over one year of implementation, all 12 national key economic areas have achieved tremendous progress, achieving 23% of the set KPIs for 2011. 72 out of the 131 entry point projects have taken off. Now let me take you through, through some of our achievements in 2011. In agriculture, 5,000 hectares of land were amalgamated involving 2,982 farmers from 27 farmers organizations, with early harvest projecting a 50 to 100% increase. 22 existing permanent food production zones were upgraded to enhance the quality and production of fruits and vegetables. Under business services, aviation, repair and maintenance and overhaul sector surpassed 2.6 billion ringgit. That's a lot of money. 17 new multinational corporations have set up outsourcing and data centers in Malaysia. And these will create more than 6,000 new jobs within the next three years. With communications, content and infrastructure, more than 60% household breadborne penetration was achieved in 2011. More than 1,300 villages across the country now connected through wireless internet. In the industry-led public-private collaboration to grow the export segment of the creative industry saw a 29.6% increase in export revenue. In education, we want to ensure that every child has access to affordable quality education. You can see the success of the Edu City in Iskandar in positioning Malaysia as a regional hub in the global education network. Institutions such as Raffles University Iskandar, Marlboro College, and the Raffles American School. These have all set up operations here in Malaysia. Over in electrical and electronics, LED SSL Certification Center in Penang is now equipped to perform testing in accordance with the American National Standards Institute. This is the first institution outside the United States of America to do so. We managed to increase the solar cells to production capacity to 2.3 gigawatt, well above the target of 1.5 gigawatt. Under the wholesale and retail, 519 traditional sundry shops transform under the Tokar program, with owners seeing an increase of between 30 to 80 percent in their outcomes, in their incomes rather. This was done with the assistance of large retailers such as Kafu, Tesco and Maidin in providing advisory services to the Kadairun chip. In the financial services, we made a very big push to encourage our banks to move beyond our borders. Six out of our banks now have presence in 19 countries and increasing their share of profits from abroad. CIMB, for example, derives more than half of their pre-tax profits from the non-domestic sources. Free trade agreements and trans-Pacific partnerships will make it easier for our banks to expand their presence as well. Under healthcare, Clinical Research Malaysia was launched and we had a total of 331 ongoing and new clinical trials. We ran a lab for medical services, which resulted in seven new entry point projects, opening up exciting new avenues for both local and foreign companies. In oil, gas and energy, Petronas awarded two risk sharing contracts to two separate consortium to develop marginal oil fields. This will be critical to ensure that we have and can maintain production. Construction on a regas terminal in Malacca has begun and it will address some of the latent gas demand in our country. With oil palm and rubber, CPO prices in 2011 has increased to 18.91 million tons 
from 17 million tons in 2010, whilst oil palm hectares increased to almost 5 million in, five, in 2011. 20 million ringgit was invested in six clinical trials in US, Singapore and Malaysia to seek medical breakthroughs by using tocotranols found in oil palm. Over in tourism, Malaysia's first premium outlooks opened Johor. We built a total of 1,350 meters of covered walk walkways linking major shopping centers in Kuala Lumpur. Today, you can walk straight from Surya Kuala Lumpur, uh, KLCC rather, to Pavilion, and from Berjaya, Times Square, to Lot 10. With Greater KL Klang Valley, Talent Corp and Invest KL were established to attract global companies and talents to Malaysia. Schlumberger, Paypal, IBM, Vale, Wally Parsons, and Toshiba have set up their operation and committed investments here in Malaysia. 600 Malaysians have returned home under the Returning Experts Program. The MRT project is also progressing well, and the first line is expected to be fully operational in 2017. Various initiatives to enhance the city's livability factors include, amongst others, of course, cleaning up the KL River, planting more trees and providing comfortable pedestrian walkways, and many more. It will be easy for us to lose focus and get tempted to spread our resources in areas that do not generate GNI. To move from middle income to a high income nation, we must fulfill both conditions. To create an environment for competitiveness and to remain focused on the sectors that will deliver us the GNI, the investment and the jobs that we're looking for. We have eight years to do this and our journey has just begun. Every Malaysian and everyone living in Malaysia has a role to play, both small and big, in this journey. Find out how you can benefit from the initiatives, whether it is to better your career or your job, create business opportunities, or understand how things can improve. Thank you.